Welcome to section one of our chapter on fungi. In this video, we'll be discussing Histoplasma capsulatum. If you're looking for an introduction to fungi and more general information, please refer to section five of our microbiology fundamentals chapter. All right, with this in mind, let's get started. This is our fungi overview figure. As you can see, we've divided the fungi up into three groups, systemic mycoses, cutaneous mycoses, and opportunistic fungal infections. We'll begin with Histoplasma capsulatum, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in an old grandma's home who is watching the History Channel. You can even see the letter H on the TV to help you remember this. Anyway, history sounds like histoplasma, which should help you remember that this image is all about histoplasma capsulatum. Now you can see that we've added a butterfly to the image. This grandma loves bugs and animals, so she collects butterflies and lets them roam the house freely. The butterfly will be our symbol for dimorphic fungi because these fungi have two forms, a mold form and a yeast form. Remember the mnemonic mold in the cold and yeast in the heat. In other words, at cold temperatures, most fungi assume the mold form, and at warm temperatures, most fungi assume the yeast form. Anyway, hopefully you can see why the butterfly is a good symbol for this. Early in its life, it is a caterpillar, and then later it becomes a butterfly. So you could say it has two forms, just like these dimorphic fungi have two forms. So Histoplasma capsulatum is a dimorphic fungus that is a mold at cold temperatures and becomes a yeast at warmer temperatures. This is a nice slide showing the difference between mold and yeast. We covered this in more detail in our microbiology fundamentals chapter, so go watch that video if this is confusing. On the left, we can see an example of a mold and on the right, we can see an example of yeast. So remember, many fungi are dimorphic and may grow as mold or yeast, depending on the environmental conditions. All right, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now notice that we've added one of the granny's sons to the image. If you look at his shirt, you can see that he's sporting an Ohio State shirt, which should make you think of Ohio. They're also eating some Mississippi mud pie, which should make you think of Mississippi. So together, these two ideas should help you remember that histoplasma is most commonly found in the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. Like I mentioned earlier, this granny loves animals. So you can see that she has a pet bird and a bat in this cage. This is to help you remember that histoplasma is commonly found in droppings from the starling bird or bats. If we turn our attention back to the TV, you can see that the History Channel is showing a picture of a cave. The cave is here to help you remember that the fungus is also commonly found in caves. You can also see that a guy is coming out of the cave on a stretcher. The stretcher is our symbol for a compromised immune system and should help you remember that histoplasma can disseminate in immunocompromised individuals, which may affect the liver, spleen, bone marrow, and other organs. Now you can see that we've added another one of the granny's sons to the image and that he's coughing. He's allergic to all of the animals and insects in her home, so he's a bit reluctant to be here. However, it's her birthday, and she's celebrating with Mississippi mud pie, so he made an exception. In any case, the coughing guy should help you remember that histoplasma can also cause pneumonia. Next, notice that we've shown the granny's tongue sticking out of her mouth as she attempts to lick the chocolate pie. You can even see little specks of chocolate on her tongue. These kind of look like tongue ulcers and are here to help you remember that histoplasma can cause palatal and tongue ulcers. Now we've added a Dalmatian dog to the scene to add to her entourage of animals. The Dalmatian is our recurring symbol for hepatosplenomegaly, which should help you remember that histoplasma can cause hepatosplenomegaly. The granny is also our symbol for granulomas, and she's here to help you remember that histoplasma can form granulomas. Now you can see that we've shown little pellets of bird food inside of the cage that resemble yeast. The cage can be thought of as a symbol for the macrophage, and the bird food is a symbol for the yeast form of histoplasma. So together, these ideas should help you remember that microscopy may reveal macrophages filled with histoplasma yeast. This is an image of histoplasma seen within macrophages. The little purple circular dots, for example right here, are histoplasma yeast. All right, if we return to the image, you can see that we've added a third son who appears to be pretty comfortable in front of his family. Just going pee with the door open for the whole fam to see. Also notice that the granny has left out some of her gems and jewelry on the counter. The gems should make you think of antigens. So combining this idea with the urine should help you remember that histoplasma can be diagnosed by detecting antigens in the urine or serum. All right, now let's finish by discussing treatment. Notice that we've shown the granny wearing a shawl to keep her warm. This is a special shawl that has the letter A on it because her name is Annie. Anyway, this will be a recurring symbol for azol because a shawl sounds kind of like azol. So azol medications should be used to treat local infections. A few examples of azol medications include itraconazole, fluconazole, and voriconazole. Finally, notice that we've added a frog to the image that must have escaped from its cage. Now the Dalmatian dog is chasing it around the house. This amphibian will be our symbol for amphotericin B because amphibian sounds kind of like this medication. The fact that the frog has broken out of its cage and is jumping around the house should make you think of a systemic infection that has disseminated throughout the body. 
So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that amphotericin B should be used to treat systemic infections. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 24-year-old female presents to the physician due to a cough and chest pain that began two days ago. She works at a pet store cleaning bird cages. She also has smoked a pack of cigarettes per day for the past eight years. Her temperature is 38.8 degrees Celsius or 101.8 degrees Fahrenheit. A chest x-ray reveals parenchymal infiltrates and hilar lymphadenopathy. Histopathological examination of a mediastinal lymph node reveals the presence of yeast phase organisms inside of macrophages. What other pathological finding is most likely present in this individual? A. Enlarged hepatocytes. B. Septate hyphae that branch at acute angles. C. An organized collection of macrophages. Or D. Spherules filled with endospores. All right, let's go through the key points. This patient has a cough and chest pain which is suggestive of pneumonia. She cleans bird cages, and droppings from birds are a common mode of histoplasma transmission. Finally, histopathological examination has revealed the presence of yeast phase organisms inside of macrophages. This is a pathological finding that is unique to histoplasma, so the correct answer is C, an organized collection of macrophages. This is the definition of a granuloma, and recall that granuloma formation is another pathological feature of this fungus. From the image, recall that the granny right here is here to help you remember that granulomas may be observed in patients who are infected with histoplasma capsulatum. A is a reference to hepatomegaly, which can be seen in patients with disseminated histoplasmosis. However, this patient has a relatively healthy immune system, so it's unlikely that the fungus has disseminated, making hepatomegaly unlikely. So A is incorrect. B is a reference to aspergillus, which is a monomorphic fungus and forms septate hyphae that branch at acute angles. However, it's unlikely to cause pneumonia in an otherwise healthy individual. It's more typically associated with patients that have AIDS or who are severely immunocompromised, and it typically presents with hemoptysis and pleuritic chest pain. So B is incorrect. D is a reference to coccidiomycosis, and this pathogen is commonly associated with inhalation of spores in a desert environment and not with bird droppings. So D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C, an organized collection of macrophages. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about histoplasma capsulatum.